Welcome back, Zerka fans, to the September 21st, 2019 tournament recap. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we're going to be having a, another match, Dyth and Orange Sky against Team Recursion, Google Frog and Aquadim. On Vantage, another map that we haven't seen much. This tournament has been full of maps that were largely unfamiliar. Iceland, I think, is the only one I've seen prior to this entire tournament. And two of them are random generation maps. So, yeah, that's pretty much entirely a matter of an unprecedented map, because you never know what it's going to be. But Akinem and Google Frog are going for Spiders and Cloakie on a map that I'd say supports it fairly well. On the other hand, Rover, or Tank and Shieldbots coming in from Dyth and Orange Sky. I actually can kind of see the tanks. This is a, like, I can kind of see it. It's not the flattest of maps. It's got a big ravine in the middle, so I don't have much confidence about how well it's going to work, but eh, it might work. Feels a little odd to try to go for it. But hey, as long as you can get up that hill, then you're fine. Because this is still a fairly flat-ish map. It's just not the flattest map. It's actually, it might be hard to tell. Now, the map texture itself does not make that clear. Like, if you actually look at the map view, you can see that there's a lot of elevation changes. But just looking at it from the top, if you don't tilt the camera, it's actually kind of hard to tell just how flat it isn't. So already Recursion is having a bit of an advantage just because they can deal with this, or at least can defend against their ramp pretty well, at least from the tanks. However, this is going to be a bit difficult to assault because... As long as the tanks have the high ground or having to worry about actually climbing up hills, they're probably fine. I mean, or if they're on the high ground, then they're fine. It's just a matter of this one little ditch in the middle. Like, the ravine in the middle is the only thing that's actually going to be a problem for the tanks. Everything else is pretty well just fine. I'm assuming, of course, that the Venom doesn't get to it, and that does become a problem, obviously. But hey, that's... That's how it goes sometimes. Actually, that's a really efficient kill, though. At the same time, though, Eastern Team, Dyeth and Orange Sky do have a much stronger economy. They are building up a lot faster, and they are reclaiming a lot as well. While making it that much harder for expansion to happen, I think this Kodachi is actually going to be able to get up. Yes, it is! Finally gets up that ramp. I mean, attempts to stop it have been successful thus far, but that is going to be it. That, that Kodachi is up. It is attacking. It is able to do its job. But it's trying to avoid getting killed. Because of course it is. And it's at the same time gradually getting trapped. Yeah, there's only so much that thing can do. And outpaced as it is by the Glaives, it does go down and that opens things up to the south side. Now Recursion can very easily expand over there. They've destroyed the only thing harassing them. Google Frog's commander is in a good position to stop anything else from coming in. And the north side's kind of... Well, it's kind of okay. It's being built up. But now these... Venoms are going to come in here and make their life miserable as well. So Dyth and Orange Sky now forced to go for more frontal assaults when it comes to trying to raid out their opponents. But not so much for Recursion. Recursion basically has this entire north side, this entire south side for sure. I mean, we see Orange Sky trying their best to expand over to the southeast, but there's glaives all over the place. Google Frog can very easily take that. The only thing that Google Frog isn't really doing is taking these three metal extractors, which is exactly what they're doing right now with these two workers. So actually, even that is not a weakness that can be exploited. So for now, Orange Sky losing their convict. That is opening up the entire southeast side. Now this entire uh, everything is open up for Google Frog. And at least the north side is somewhat there for Dyth. Dyth can take some of these metal extractors. They have their welder in position. It's not completely over yet, but it's still very tricky. At the same time, the Glaive's coming over the round the back here. Able to get rid of... Well, able to... Not so much get rid of things. Able to cause a distraction. Maybe get rid of a couple metal extractors. It's a little hard to tell. Yeah, they're definitely going to go for one of them. So that metal extractor is going down. And the Welder isn't going to be quite so easily swayed, though. Not to mention this Lotus as well is going to be a bit of a problem. So at the moment, the Glaives aren't able to do too much, but they're still just providing that little extra bit of pressure. They're still making it that much harder for rebuilding to happen, for expansion to happen. I mean, really just making Dyth and Orange Sky's life that much more difficult. While at the same time, over to the front lines, Aquanim has a Stardust. They have their commander already in position. They have a Venom just in case anything tries to come up. I mean, the, the Ogre is going to try. No, it's not going to try. The Minotaur and Ogre are instead going over to the north side of the map, taking care of all this stuff, which should be fairly easy. I mean, the Minotaur is going to have no problem wiping this entire expansion out. 
Taking out that Weaver, which is the first order of business. Get rid of the Weaver, you get rid of the expansion attempt. And then from our expansion reattempt. And then you just tear everything else apart. And there's the Weaver gone down. The Ogre coming in here. Already in position to stop these fleas from dealing too much damage to the Minotaur. So that works pretty well. Yeah, there it is. Ogre comes in there, tears it apart. The Weaver coming in as well. So the north side being taken fairly efficiently. But at the same time, there's that Emissary. Should be able to help take out the Stardust. Not quite managing to hit the mark, though. But hey, that's radar targeting for you. There we go. Now it's managing to hit in. But at the same time, there are still the hammers coming in here, which or slings rather, which are going to be a bit of a problem. And getting rid of that stinger, getting rid of some of the expansions coming in here. Orange Sky not able to push much further out. But they have managed to take some of the south side of the map. Unfortunately, it may not be enough. Minotaur coming in here. The ogre is not there. The ogre looks like it got... Yes, the ogre did get killed. So unfortunately, not able to save that Minotaur with these glaives able to tear apart everything coming over to the north. That does mean there's no expansions coming in here from the eastern side. Fortunately for them, Recursion hasn't quite used all the metal they've been stocking up. But unfortunately, the Eastern team is in a very similar boat. Not to mention having lost all this metal over to the north side of the map. I mean, once Recursion gets their production in order, there's going to be boatloads of reclaim. And Recursion has just gotten their production in order. So yeah, there you go. There is going to be a lot of reclaim. There's going to be a lot of useful reclaim. And Recursion is going to be able to pull that into a very strong army advantage. As it is, I mean, Recursion already has two-thirds of the map. Recursion's already in a great spot as far as that goes. Just a matter of whether or not Recursion can actually convert that into the victory, which honestly is not going to be that hard. It's just a matter of pushing. Like, finding the right time and right position and organizing all the forces, and once you do that, you just push. I mean, Eastern Team doesn't have a huge amount of static defenses in play, so it's not like it's pushing through this big fort. But at the same time, Recursion is playing it carefully. They want to just find the weak spots as they can. Turn them apart as relevant, and then go from there. Which I totally agree with, and that's a good strategy. We're seeing Google Frog already getting rid of Metal Extractor, getting rid of a few metal military setup, or a few military units over to the south side of the map, getting rid of a convict, that's what you want to do. And from there, I mean, it's just a pretty simple matter of continuing along, getting rid of more Metal Extractors. The One Lotus is really the only resistance here of the south side of the map. And the north side of the map, I mean, again, that's where Dyth is building up, but again... Actually, this is a bit tricky, because the Blitz should be able to take care of the Thug Shield no problem. The Outlaw probably isn't going to be a huge threat either. I mean, the Minotaur should be able to... Wait, what am I saying? They're on the same side. Bah. <laughs> if, if the Eastern team decided to start friendly firing and killing each other off... It's like, forget it, it's a free-for-all now. No. My bad. But... Yeah, I've been... Gotta notice, I have not been able to sleep well for the last long while, so yeah, that's the reason why I didn't cast the tournament in the first place. Ooh, nice lucky hit on there, the emissary. But yeah, this is. I mean, the last ditch attempt coming in here from Dyth and Orange Sky. I mean, they're trying, but the Venom's gonna be able to stop the Kodachis dead in their tracks. The Reckless is able to wipe out everything out. Everything in the Spiderbot factory is just outpacing all the tanks and shields coming in here. There's not a whole lot of options. Especially while at the same time, the main base is being destroyed. I mean, the Phantom was spotted, but it wasn't killed when it was spotted, so it's back to being cloaked. It's back to being fine. At the same time, the Eastern team at least able to get some reclaim going, getting that Minotaur shell, turning it into another Minotaur. But it's ultimately a question of what, what can be done to partly get rid of this fire base over here, and partly just to rebuild, re-expand. I mean, Eastern Team is actually doing okay with Reclaim. Surprisingly enough, they're actually doing fine economically, despite the fact that they don't have a whole lot of metal extractors, largely because of the harassment over the north side of the map. But even that is only going to last so long. Apart from, I mean, if there were Weavers coming in here, it would be totally over. Like, if Akram had sent Weavers along with this force, just to rebuild as they go and Reclaim as they go, it would be very much over right now. The Eastern team is kind of getting lucky on that, because Aquaman does generally prefer to use Caretakers to reclaim, or at least used to. That might be why we're not seeing a lot of Weavers coming in here, but honestly, I don't know why we're not seeing the Weavers in here. I'd like to see some Weavers in here, just to get that reclaim going, get the rebuilding going as they go. Now, to be fair, the Glaze are doing a fine job harassing and destroying Eastern team's economy, so Eastern team, now at 35 metal per second, they're not doing well at all. 
I mean, they're harassing reasonably okay, defending okay in the south side, but it's only working so well. And that's not very well at all. Thunderbird coming in here did get killed off, did manage to do some damage, but only just managed to slow things down a bit. But that's enough to put Dyth in a position where they figure... Oh, that, on top of the fact that their glaives destroying the main base, destroying the main factory. Yeah, Dyth figures there's not much they can do. I mean, to be fair, there hasn't been a lot that they could have done most of this game. It's been very lopsided. But at least they tried. And that is it. Team Recursion does take the game. Although, if we look at Metal Used, it's actually fairly even. Metal Used is fairly even. Army value was actually in the advantage of the Eastern team for most of the game. Metal Income was about even. Like, it was a fairly even game by the numbers. It was more a matter of, well, partly positioning and partly efficiency of units getting killed. Actually, efficiency of units getting killed is a big one. And despite that, the army value was better for Eastern team. But again, like this approach here, I mean, that, that prevented a lot of expansion. It meant the Eastern team had to really go around in a way that they couldn't easily support each other across the map, whereas... Because Recursion had the center of the map basically under their control, they could easily pass units back and forth as needed, or pass units around the map as needed. So it wasn't really the same kind of problem as you'd normally see. Eh. But yeah. So with that, we have... That's round three. So next match is going to be round four on another random map. It is going to be just random map. It's called Random Map Gen. So yeah, very random map. We'll see Dyth again but now against Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla. Actually, do I want that one? I guess I do, because haven't, we haven't seen Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla yet. Hmm. Okay, I'll figure out who I actually want to do in that one, because I feel like... Yeah, let's do that. So yeah. Steel Blue and Ultra Godzilla against Dyth and Orange Sky, who might be able to redeem themselves after this match. So yeah, that'll be up in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.